Well, hi everyone, it's Isabel here and welcome back to the channel on another episode of Am I the A-Hole on Reddit? All right, guys, so I filmed several of these and I know I've had a lot of you guys absolutely obsessed with it, which I love. I think this is so much fun. So uh, today we have a bunch that I wanna cover. So I'm actually gonna try and see if I can consistently have at least seven different stories per video. I, again, like if you guys do or don't know, or if you're literally brand new to me, like as a whole creator, I have a completely separate channel that I have that is talking about like scams, unethical businesses, is. So if we go from that channel to this one, I'm pumping out almost nine to 10 videos a month on that channel. And then I'm trying to do 45 on this one. So do the math. That's a lot of content that I'm pushing out, not including any other platforms that I have. And it's just a little me working on all of that. So, but I am trying to consistently make the series have just as much fun content as possible while also making it not too drastically long. And at this time, this is exactly what I can work with. So we're going to do seven stories per. All right. And I'm so excited to be diving into this brand month, right? February. Okay. Season of love. I know damn well, we're going to have some juicy stories come that are Valentine's Day themed. Like I just know it. I'm so excited, but right now still we're dealing with more like coming out of winter, new year kind of stuff. Okay. So that's kind of what we're going to be going into. We have a lot of mother-in-law stories. There's so much shit going on. So let's get into it. All right. Again, before we hop in, don't forget to check out my other channel where I talk about their commentary, talking about businesses, scams, and so much more over there. It's just, it's really fun. We love being over there. Okay. Instagram, TikTok, merch, all that good shit is in the description below as well. And yeah, without further ado, uh, let's get into it. First one, at this point in time, I'm not happy with the title. In fact, I'm disappointed. How the fuck have we got, I, okay. <sighs> Am I the asshole for kicking my sister-in-law out after she pooped in my bassinet? I'm, I'm honest, I, at this point, I need to get a drink during some of these. Throw away. I, 30 female, still cannot fathom what recently occurred. My brother, Josh, 27, married Kelly, 26, last year after a brief three-month romance. Wow, red flag. Uh, they claim she was his soulmate. While my parents disapproved, I was simply concerned. I did not meet them so much since I lived two hours away. I'm currently pregnant. My due date is in two months. We hosted our families, including Josh and Kelly for my baby shower yesterday. However, right from the beginning, Kelly's behavior was off-putting. She was constantly making negative comments, which I ignored. At one point, however, she loudly called the event fucking dumb, leaving everyone shocked. My mother took her aside after a few minutes and then Kelly asked for space from all of us and retreated to our guest room. Josh checked in on her once. Toward the end of the party, when only few people were left in the house, mom and I went to check on her, but she was not in the guest room. And all rooms close to the GR had been lo looked into. GR? What the fuck does GR mean? I'm sorry, I don't know what that means. All rooms close to the GR, guest room, my bad. Sorry, there we go. Took me a second, my bad. Guest room had been looked into. We found her in our closet going through our stuff. She quickly got out after saying she was looking for the restroom, despite knowing where it was in the hallway. She left to join the group in the living room. I had already suspected something was up, so I wanted to check in all rooms just in case. Nothing was missing or out of place except for the nursery. But what I also noticed was a foul smell in the room. I don't want to keep going. I was looking for the source when I looked over into the bassinet. I could not believe what I saw. It was a full-blown turd right in the middle of my baby's bassinet. There was no way an animal could have come in the room and it was clearly human shit. But I called my mom and husband in and they saw what I saw. There was only one person from the party who had been in this part of the house and it was Kelly. At some point I started to cry and I stormed to the living room to confront her. When I called her out, her face told that she knew what this was about. She feigned innocence for a while, but then asked me what proof I have to prove it was hers. This was when I lost my cool and screamed at her to get out of my house. Josh got angry at me for trying to kick his wife out and scream back. I asked him if he knew what was up, to which he refused. Then I told him in front of everyone that Kelly had shit in the bassinet. He did not believe me, but I took him to show and some other people are following leading to public confrontation and shame. She starts screaming, calling me a witch and saying she wished I'd die in child childbirth. My husband promptly kicked both of them out. Since morning, however, Josh and Kelly both been texting me saying I embarrassed them and could have been solved privately, but they refused to give me the reason why she did it or apologize. So, so I'm not responding anymore. Am I the asshole? Oh my fuck me. I, I can't, I didn't think we can get any lower. Okay. Here's, this is, oh God, I have multiple ways that this could be handled. All right. You know what? I'm going to be real. I'm going to be very honest with you guys. And I'm just going to, I'm going to be speaking out loud in the most truthful way from my soul, okay? There are some people in this world that deserve to get their ass beat. There are some people who have never been swung on before. And I'm not saying everyone has to. I'm just saying after you hit a certain level, you do deserve to get your shit rocked. That's just my opinion. This is one of those moments where if you shit in my child's bassinet, I am shoving your fucking head in it. Kick them out, never speak to them again, throw everything away. I would literally be sanitizing that room so insanely. If you want 
want to be that extra, the way I would literally find a way to press charges in some way for like ruined property or something. Like actually, she deserves, she needs to buy you a brand new bassinet. Oh my God, your brother has, why would he, she's crazy. Oh my God, I am so sorry. Restraining order. I, this sounds, it sounds disgusting. I can't even believe I'm fucking saying this, but saving it for a test. Yeah, that would make sense. I would have filed quickly. You know, you know what? You know what? You know, it sounds real fun. You know, what's a good idea. I just had a brilliant idea. You know what I do? You know what I'd fucking do? Oh, this is evil, but I don't really care. I would have got, I would have got a little doggy bag. Okay. I would have picked up her shit. This is disgusting. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I would, I would fucking fight fire with fire. I'm an Aries. I don't give a shit. I would invite her over. I'd be like, you know what? You know what, Kelly? I'm actually, yeah, let's talk. I'm so sorry. I would invite her over. I would bring her snacks. I would be like water under the, you know what? Let's, we're family now. I would give her a lot of lemonade or something. So she'd have to piss at my house. The second she enters my bathroom, I'm taking that fucking doggy bag. I'm putting it in her purse and I'm fucking grabbing that, that DH gate purse of hers. And I'm throwing it from side to side with her shit in it, making sure just can rubbing it together. Just Mm, you know, get it all wrapped up in there and then give it to her and tell her to get the fuck out of your house. And by the way, it's her own shit. It's going to be kind of difficult to report that the human shit is in your purse and file something. You know, I don't know. I just think that's a good idea. I, I know technically the smart idea would be to report this to the police, get a restraining order. Up, but petty me would take her own shit, rub it inside of her own purse. Um, and give it back to her. You know what I mean? I just think that would be the best option ever. So yeah, that's just my thought, but fuck her. All right, next one. Ooh, this one's gonna be good. It says, am I the asshole for telling my mother she has zero rights to name my wife's and my child and her opinion is not wanted or important here? What is, I need to know, what lead poisoning is inside of some of these fucking mother-in-laws? Because I swear every damn video I've made has had a mother-in-law story. What is wrong with y'all? Like, I know that there are some mother-in-laws that are magical and amazing. And like, oh my God, I can't wait to have a best like friend relationship with my mother-in-law. Cannot wait. I better have that. That's all I got. I'm going to be pissed if I didn't. It says my mom is being the mother-in-law. You poor soul. Mother-in-law from hell to my wife right now. And I snapped at her recently over this and have laid some boundaries down, but I'm questioning my reaction to her. 99.9% .9 sure you're right. So my wife, Kenzie, 25F and I, 25M, have been married for just over a year and we're expecting our first child this year. Congrats. This will be my parents' first grandchild, and this has caused some craziness from my mom. She has aimed most of this at Kenzie, but I did step in when I learned how pushy my mom became. This started right after our pregnancy announcement. My mom went to Kenzie and told her we should name our child Roger if we had a boy and Elizabeth if we have a girl. Roger was my mom's grandfather, and she wanted to name me or one of my brothers Roger, but dad vetoed the name every time. I think we need to ask ourselves why. If you're named Roger, I'm really sorry if you're watching this. I'm just saying, you know there's some names that are good for like certain time periods and that's it. I kind of feel like that's, that's, that's the vibe. If I'm so sorry, I have personal opinions about names. I, I, I am a bitch that is weirded out by certain names. This would not be for me. You had an opportunity to name your child Roger, make him a middle name. Now you had your kids, let it go. Other people are having their kids right now. If you want to name something Roger, buy a fish, a lizard. Roger the lizard would kind of be lit. Okay. Elizabeth is her favorite girl name, but in my dad vetoed that for my sister too. Kenzie told her we weren't really looking for name suggestions and we had discussed a few already. My mom told her the names were important should be used. A couple of weeks after the first incident, my mom asked Kenzie if she knew whether baby Roger or baby Elizabeth was joining the family. Kenzie told her neither of those names were in the running and we didn't know yet. Kenzie mentioned mom bringing up the names to me then, but downplayed how pushy she was being, so I said nothing at that point. We learned we were having a boy. My mom became so pushy that she ordered blankets and clothing with the name Roger embroidered on them. What a crazy bitch. The first week we knew of this, she gave us a little door decoration with the name Roger on it. I told my mom that we hadn't finalized the name yet yet and wouldn't be announcing it until after he is here anyway. She went to Kenzie yet again and told her she's pissing her off by refusing to comply. They argued about it and Kenzie told me about it afterward. I went and talked to my mom and made some things clear and she asked why nobody in the family wanted to use the name she loved. I told her that was something she should work through herself because we're not obligated to use them for her. Yeah, it's not even like, it's just a random name. Get over yourself, Deborah, or I don't know what her name is. She then sent a gift package with all the clothes and blankets with the name Roger. She sent them to my wife and posted them on social media. 
Yeah. This made people assume we had chosen the name Roger. This was when I lost it and went over to confront her about the pushiness. She told me it was important to take her opinion on board as my mom and our son's grandma. And that's when I told her she had zero rights to name our baby and her opinion wasn't was wanted or important here. My mom told me it was rude to dismiss her opinion and her feelings as unimportant and I should have more respect for her. It made me realize we need space from her right now, but also to wonder if I went too far. Am I the asshole? Uh, absolutely not. I think that's my new favorite phrase is absolutely not because that literally qualifies for all of it. Okay. You're not the asshole remotely. And there are way too many people that I think have kids that want to like fulfill their dreams or like things they never got to do through their own kids. And I don't understand that at all. Like it to me, it's very similar when someone's like, I've always wanted to play piano. So I wasn't able to when I was a kid, but I'm going to force my kid who hates the piano to play it. Makes no logical sense. Oh my God. I really wish I would have done it this way while raising kids. I'm going to put a lot of pressure on my children to do this with theirs. Stop being such an entitled fuck. I'm, there are way too many grandparents that think that family means that they can have a free for all with opinions. No, 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 no. If that is their child and their life, let it go. I would be very concerned about that. Um, and I do not like how she's also pre-announcing things. Here's my thought process too, is I would not even be sending photos of your baby even to her. She's gonna just post things and do whatever she wants. And especially if you're not comfortable with that, don't let her do that. I would be super restrictive on the communication and contact. And I think once you do that, she's gonna show her true colors and lose her mind and not be understanding and respectful. And I think that's when you need to pull back more because at the end of the day, that's the last thing that your wife needs to deal with. Your wife is gonna be going through something so, intense which is childbirth the healing of that having a baby that is so scary like I can't even imagine how much pressure and stress and pain and because you have this new human you have to take care of then you have to take care of yourself and then like oh my god I don't really know what I'm doing I'm figuring it out like that's so much to handle and the last thing you want is someone who is difficult in your life so I would quite frankly completely cut contact with her right now if you want to think about looking into it later you can I I would be pushing away big time that's the last thing in you and your wife need especially your wife and I would push her away immediately uh, and I would also make a little post on social media be like hi that's not our kid's name I don't know what my mom's saying next one you guys am I the asshole for telling my mom I don't want to replace my husband the way she replaced my dad oh fuck this is gonna be a dark one okay I 30f lost my husband four years ago I'm so sorry. We share two children together. Our son is nine and our daughter is six. Since my husband's death, I have focused on myself and my children and have no interest in dating or finding another husband. My mom has experienced with this and when my sister and I were children, six, me, and eight, her, we lost our dad and mom remarried 15 months later. At the time, whoa, okay. This is just me, but that sounds kind of fast because you need some time to get to know somebody and then get married right after your partner died? Okay. Uh, at the time, she told us we were getting a quote, new dad. Once her husband arrived in our lives there were an expectation and pressure to call him dad and mom took down oh all photos of dad okay there was some weird shit going on then because you, that that's fucking wrong um we me and my sister took some photos of dad and hid them with our friends out of fear mom would destroy them or throw them all away wow she didn't but the ones we didn't take we kept locked up in storage somewhere and have never seen the light of day my sister asked for them on a few occasions and was told she didn't need them our dad's stuff was likely in there too if they weren't tossed in the garbage it caused a lot of strain between as a mom. For the last two years, my mom has been dropping hints that I should get back out there and always said I didn't want to or I would ignore it. Then a couple months ago, she told me I needed to get my kids a dad before it's too late, that I need a husband. I told her that they have a dad and he doesn't need to be replaced. She dropped it for a few weeks, but then last week she brought it up again. She told me the kids need a dad and I need a husband around it. I will be alone and lonely for the rest of my life. She told me I can't remain dedicated to being my husband's wife for the rest of my life. She said I'm too young and the kids are too young to never get another dad. I told told her I don't want another husband and my kids don't need another dad. She asked me when I would be if she had that mindset and I didn't have a dad. I told her I lost my dad at six and miss him every day and I never had another one. Things escalated from there and asked me how I could say that when her husband has been my dad for 24 years. I told her he's never been and never will be and just because she replaced my dad doesn't mean I want to replace my husband. My mom was furious and told me that that wasn't fair and she should understand her better. I told her I understood her even less after losing my husband because I would never remove all traces of him through the home and I would never deny my kids his things the way that she did. I would never force my kids to call someone else dad and I told her I can't even imagine wanting to find them someone else to call dad. I told her they had an amazing dad and he's still their dad, just the way mine will always be my dad. She called me spiteful and selfish and she went to my sister for backup, but she told her she feels the same way. My aunt, who was my mom's sister, told me I shouldn't have said that and accused her of replacing my dad instead of seeing she just wanted us to be happy. Is cruel and I'm old enough that I should understand. Am I the asshole? 
You are not the asshole whatsoever. So this is something, and again, I have a personal belief on this. Um, I personally, I really like the idea of having a find your person and that's it type thing. Like if they don't choose to leave me, I don't personally... Like I'm a very, like I'm good on my own type of individual. And I don't think that would be like a motivation for me if I was in that position to like find a new person. That's not, that's not for me. Um, Whatever you want to do is your business, not mine. However, I do not like when people remarry and remove every inch of that former person from their kids' life. That is not normal whatsoever. There should be photos up around. That was their dad. The step parent should be very much aware of that. And if honestly encouraging conversation and memories, because that's not like, that's not a threat. There's nothing like the person is not there anymore, but keeping that memory alive is beneficial for the kids. So you're not the asshole. I think that person is just completely ridiculous and rude. And your mom is just ridiculously rude in my opinion. If she wants to do that, that's that was her own thing. But you, on the other hand, are not required to do that in any way. So again, I'm so sorry. This is unnecessary bullshit you're dealing with. Ooh, here is another one. It says, am I the asshole for banning someone from D&D? &D? Is this Dungeons and Dragons? I've never played that. Anyone like, has anyone played that before? Comment that down below because I've I've never really known what that was. I know it's got to do with like kind of fantasy medieval shit. Like I, I don't really know. I would actually, I need to actually look it up to kind of figure out what the hell it is because I've always been curious, but sorry, let's get into it. I 25F live with my younger sister, Nina 21F to save money. We both pay the rent equally. I also host regular D&D &D sessions and recently we got a new player. It all seemed well until my sister came home, said a quick hello to everyone and went to her room. After the session, the new player immediately turned to me and asked if she was single. She is, but she's also completely under untrusted in a relationship. The way she puts it, men are pretty, women are pretty, cats are pretty. <laughs> it does not mean I want to date any of them. Okay, fair enough. Since I didn't want to tell him the details, I just told him she's not interested. He promptly accused me of being jealous and told me that that's for her to decide. I basically said, you aren't her or my type, trust me. He got offended and started berating me, so I told him not to come to any more sessions. The next day, one of the other players told me I overreacted, but I don't want someone like that in my home. Am I the asshole? Let me, let me take a wild guess and say the other person that says you're overreacting was another fucking man. Okay, no one is entitled to anyone's time. I don't give a shit if a man wants to go and be like, you're pretty. I don't owe you anything. You're a stranger to me. I don't owe you anything. I don't need to talk to you. If you're like, okay, this person's uninterested. You're clearly her sister. He's pissy that you clearly stated you're very, very much not either one of our types. So don't even worry about it. He's the one that kept pushing. He could have easily just fucking listened and been like, oh, she's not interested. Okay, great. Leave it at that. Leave it at that. That's so weird. If you wanted to, you could have simply, if the guy could have simply been like, oh, hey, is she going to come out? I'd love to talk to her. That's fine. If not, let it go. Literally let it go. Some people are so fucking sensitive. Whoever, whoever, honestly, quite frankly, whoever's like, you're being too much. That was overreaction. Kick them the fuck out too. You don't need any losers like that in your house. Next one. Am I the asshole for insisting that my in-laws buy my daughter a new doll? Okay, this, mm, this will be interesting. The past Christmas, my mother got my daughter, Amy, for F, a doll she's been asking for. It's a baby version of Mirabelle. Oh. <gasps> From the Disney movie Encanto? I love that movie. It's quickly become her favorite. A baby Mirabelle? That's so cute. <laughs> My husband's cousin Nat has a daughter. I'll call Julie six. I wouldn't classify her as spoiled, but she does have a tendency of disobeying other people. There have been numerous occasions in which I asked Julie to do something like, please sit down, please don't touch that, etc. And she either ignored me or went behind my back to do the opposite. While I understand that she's a child, Nat rarely makes any attempt to educate her daughter or correct her behavior. Last week, Nat and Julie came to visit us with some other relatives. Julie saw the Mirabelle doll and asked my daughter if she could play with her. Amy refused. Julie protested, but I spoke to the girls and managed to get them to play with other toys. Sometime later, the kids sat down to watch TV while me and the others got the dinner ready. When we went back to the living room, Julie was gone. After a short search, we found her in the bathroom. She had taken not only the Mirabelle doll, but also my nail, my nail polish carrying case. Julie had used my nail polish to paint the doll's hair, face, and dress. It covered most of her facial painting, matted her hair, and ruined her clothes. Amy said what happened, saw what happened, and was devastated. When we asked Julie what she was doing, she said, 
said she was giving the doll a makeover. Nat and Julie left in a hurry. The next day, I asked that Nat what she was planning to do about it. She suggested that the girls apologize to each other, Julie for painting the doll and Amy for not sharing in the first place, and quote, hug it out and offered to give me a couple new bottles of nail polish. I made it clear that Amy did not need to apologize. And while I didn't care about the nail polish, they cost $4. Julie didn't empty the bottle she used. I did expect Nat and her husband to replace the doll. Nat refused. She said it wouldn't be fair for her to waste money on a quote, innocent mistake a child has made. She also doesn't think Julie should be the only one apologizing as none of this would have happened if Amy had agreed to share in the first place. Apparently, Nat and her husband fought over this, and she kept insisting that Julie was just a child and they owed us nothing. So now, in addition to saying it was entitled to me to expect a new doll, she's blaming me for their fight. My husband is on my side, but my mother-in-law thinks I should apologize as this is blown out of proportion and could have dealt with it more gracefully. She also thinks it was wrong of Amy to refuse to share. Am I the asshole? We need to get rid of this very old mentality that children are entitled to share. I don't comprehend this. Okay, it's one thing, for example, if like a kid's not playing with something thing maybe and it's like kind of shared toys that's different if your kid has a toy they're not entitled to share for example let's do the grown-up version of this you no person no friend no nobody is entitled to use my shit not my mic not my laptop none of it no one's entitled i'm not entitled to share with anyone if i buy a fucking big ass cheeseburger and if you touch it we're going to throw hands in the Walmart parking lot. Like I'm not entitled to share. I don't like the idea of pushing kids to share all the time. If it's theirs and they're using it and if it's theirs in general, they don't need to. I think it's teaching kids that they are able to just, they have to give up everything. I don't like that. I think that's completely rude and they need to be able to know boundaries and set them with other people. It's not your kid's fault that the other child and parent is not learning how to set boundaries, but that other child has some problems and it's because of the parenting. It absolutely is. Again, I don't have kids, but I have common sense. Okay. I have at least two brain cells, so I know what's up. I definitely think that she's uh, owed a brand new doll. That is a child behavior. That's a really big problem and the parents aren't correcting it. You're not the ass whatsoever. And I'm very sorry. Honestly, I wouldn't invite her over anymore. Maybe it's just me, but I would have personally said, fuck it. We're not having her over anymore because I know it's not the child's fault. Like in the way of like, this is all she knows because like, that's just how she's getting raised, which really sucks. It's unfortunate when you have shitty parenting, ruining kids and their behavior. That's not fair. But because of that, because someone's not going to respect boundaries or respect your children's items, then I would not be having them over uh, ever again, actually. So there's that. And by the way, mother-in-law thinks I should apologize. God, it's almost like this happens all the time with mother-in-laws. Shut up. All of you get a hobby and stop being stupid for fun. Next one. Number six. Am I the ass? for not letting my sister use my prom dress that I paid for. You are probably not the asshole. So I know it might seem stupid, but it is important to me. Babe, it's okay. You, it's not stupid. It is currently an argument of my family. I, 25 female, had my prom in 2017 and I bought my entire prom outfit for myself due to my family not having the best economy. And I saved up for over a year to be able to buy my dream dress and jewelry. Everything in total was about $300, which is a lot for us. I had an amazing time and that dress is very important to me since I had had never had the best self-confidence and it made me feel beautiful. I'm so proud of you. That's a big deal. Now my sister 18F, let's call her Annie, is having her prom later this year. She asked if she could use my dress as a well. She loved it and wished that she could use it. I told her that I would prefer she didn't since it's so important to me. I also have a Nero disorder and it makes it hard for me to let other people use my things. She said okay and said that she at least wanted to ask but she was fine with finding another dress. And I said I'd help pay if she wanted. And if she wanted, she was welcome to use the jewelry and she will wear the hair accessories. I'm pretty stable in income. Annie thanked me and said we could go shopping together. That's a damn deal. Okay, I didn't even expect that. Phenomenal offer. Love you for that. Now, I live about three hours away from my family due to school, and I didn't go home often due to not having a car. I came home last week to visit as my nephew, cousin's kids, she's like a sister, are getting baptized. When I walk through the front door to my parents, Annie is wearing my prom dress, and my grandma and mom are taking measurements. I asked them what they're doing, and they said that I'm being the asshole for not letting Annie, Annie use it. She is my, quote, baby sister after all. Mom's words. I got upset and screamed at Annie to take it off, which I later apologized for. She believed I'd changed my mind since mom said I had agreed. 
Oh, so mom's playing a game of fucker and find out. Got it. I yelled at my mom and grandma because they tried to go behind my back and even change the dress to better fit Anna. She was 155 pounds and I was almost 300 when I wore it. I cried and yelled at them. As soon as Annie came back with my dress, I took it and packed it down, said I'd stay with my cousin. Now my family is torn. Some people agreeing with me and some saying I'm the asshole for not letting Annie use it. I don't feel like I was in the wrong for not letting her use it. After all, it was my dress that I paid for and I even offered to pay for her dress. So am I the asshole? Edit, since a lot of people have mentioned not wearing it again, I have worn it since. It's not the typical prom dress. It's more of a flowy summer dress. Also, the one reason I didn't bring it with me is because I lived in a dorm room and I could only bring essentials with me. Once I moved to a bigger place, I plan on bringing all my stuff to my new place. The dress is currently at my cousin's place and I might bring it back with me when I go home. Please don't blame my sister for this. Her and I have talked it out and we're on good terms. We will buy a dress together once her prom gets closer in May. Yeah, no, you are not the asshole whatsoever. I, Annie, uh, Annie, I think got caught in the middle of some things where her mom was like, oh, wait, I talked to her and she said it's fine. And then Annie was like, oh, okay. Like I get the younger sister, like just naturally listening to mom. Absolutely. Your mom is a messy fuck for that. There is no need to take your things and ruin it. I would be livid. Honestly, I'd be like, you ruined it. I would like for you to pay for a new one. If they don't, at that point, I personally would probably not talk with them much because they sound extremely unreasonable. That's so disrespectful. And I'm just, I'm so sorry that you had to deal with that. No, I would be very distant from them after that if I was you. Last but not least, you guys, am I the asshole for canceling my sister's visit, even though her therapist said she needed a vacation? About three years ago, my stepsister Daphne got pregnant. She and her husband Jim were thrilled, but found out at 20 weeks skin, the baby had a congenital condition and would be born severely disabled. Apologize if these are in sensitive terms. I'm not sure how people prefer to say it. Daphne decided to keep going with the pregnancy despite despite Jim's protests and they split up, but got back together by the time their son Liam was born. He is now two years old. Over the last two years, D Daphne and Jim's mental health has declined significantly. Daphne used to be a positive and pleasant person, but now it's impossible to have a conversation with her. She's malicious, envious, and flies off the handle at any perceived slight. When I was having my child, I didn't speak to her for most of the pregnancy because of how bitter and narcissistic she was. We don't live close to Daphne, so rarely we see her in person, but I heard she was getting worse from our parents. In early November, Daphne had a mental breakdown. She trashed Liam's room completely and vandalized Jim's car in a fit of rage. This was enough to finally get her moved up to the waiting list for mental health services, and she started therapy. She reached out to me during this time, and we had a few conversations, and I invited her and Jim to visit my husband and I for a vacation at our beach house in March. Beach house, okay, love that for you. Then we saw Daphne and Jim over Christmas, and it was awful. Daphne could keep herself in check for a couple hours, but then she would revert back to her old self. She would swear constantly, and while I know Liam can't understand her, I think swearing at kids isn't okay. Oh, swearing at kids? No. Ah, uh, yeah, absolutely not. Whenever I expressed concern for her, she would just snap that I need to get off my high horse about having a, quote, perfect child. Ooh, that's not good. Uh, Jim was snapping at her constantly. He would also constantly ask to hold her play with my child to the point it got, an ooh, got annoying. Overall, the whole Christmas break was just the whole family being anxious over the situation. My husband finally said a week ago that he didn't want Daphne and Jim visiting, and I agreed. I called Daphne and said that something had come up with my husband's work and we needed to cancel the trip. Daphne was furious. Apparently, her therapist had been saying how good this break would be for her. They haven't been on a vacation since having Liam and I owed her this one to help her. Eventually she gave up and said I was a horrible person for pulling the rug out from under her and hung up. I feel bad if I'm derailing her recovery and even my parents think I shouldn't have canceled, which is making me rethink things. They see how absolutely horrible she was to me over Christmas. They saw how absolutely horrible she was to me over Christmas and they saw how obsessed Jim became with my child. They still think I should have put that aside and then that normally the quote keep peep the peace people so maybe I really am the wrong am I the asshole oh wow okay and there's some what is it called resentment and anger because she has a child with a disability I believe is from what I'm picking up okay I don't know how to even navigate that um you are not the asshole for cutting off that vacation you gave the opportunity for Christmas which honestly I'm so glad that you had the Christmas break before because imagine going to the beach house and Daphne being a nightmare absolutely not if you guys want a vacation you should have a vacation that's enjoyable I understand mental health health and mental health struggles are really bad and she might have something really really bad going on that's making her more on edge however one thing I will be very adamant about and this is just a full-on fact just because you have mental health struggles and things you're going through does not mean that you could be verbally abusive physically abusive and just downright awful to people it's one thing to struggle with your emotions and have bad days that does not negate the fact that you can mistreat people end of story that's literally not up for fucking debate you cannot be abusive and awful to people 
and also mistreating your child, no, you need to get help and trying to be like, well, my therapist said this is a good idea. So you can't be doing this for me. You're derailing my, no, you're not derailing her recovery. You're not doing anything of the sort. While she needs to do things for herself, you're doing things for you. You are not obligated to take care of her or help her heal. There's gotta be other ways and things that can happen to make that happen. And a trip is not going to completely change everything for her. She has issues that have been going on for a very long time. So there's that. Okay, that I think the canceling the trip was the right call. Um, That's really, really awful. She has very destructive um, behaviors and you shouldn't have to deal with that. So that was it for today's video and this entire episode of Am I the Asshole? That was a big old long one. So comment down below what you guys are thinking about all these stories. How are you guys feeling? That was a lot happening all at once. Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel and watch all the other Am I the Asshole episodes as well. That is in a playlist in the description below. And yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.